YouTube, man. I want to talk about my offense. I've been putting a lot of thought into should I update the ebook? Should I give the people, you know, something they can buy? But you know what? YouTube's been popping. You guys have been showing me tons of support both on the stream and on the YouTube. So I'm going to go ahead and give you my offense. Pretty much the adjustments that I'm doing now out of New Orleans. I use New Orleans Playbook. Um, also, everything that's on Madden Turf that the ebook, if you guys have purchased it or you want to, below. That link is below. Everything on there is still viable. One of my biggest flaws as a content creator is I've kind of run the same offense for two or two years now. So it gives me less things to sell because I, I like this offense. I think it works versus everything. I think there's different formations in it to work against every defense. And some people struggle against tight offset. Some people can really stop uh, blast. Some people really can't stop what, uh, what you call it, Trey Y flex. And some people still struggle against bunch. So it has a lot of options going to that's why i love the new orleans playbook i've loved it for two years now and uh, i'll show you guys what i'm doing now that's a little bit different than what i've done in the past and i've been using blast so much you know in the middle of the year they came out with this blast people have had a lot of success with it uh competitively and i think it's really good ultimately a month i think it's it's really just good for short yardage yes you can make big plays and and the best defense it attacks is when they try to put everybody in the box and blitz everybody at you so it's a great weapon to have and i want to show you guys how I utilize Blast, how I utilize Dagger, and all the last thing is how I utilize Read Option, which is probably one of the most high-powered run games in Madden 20 that we don't talk about, and I'll show you guys how I use these. But first things first, obviously, whether you use Lamar, you use Vic, or you use Robert Griffin, whoever you have back there, um, Blast is what I what I run. Um, I, normally, I don't have no Hot Route Master, but you can use Hot Route Master. The Golden Ticket quarterbacks have Hot Route Master and can get Fast Break. Fast break is the most important ability you want on your quarterback. Um, if you don't have Hot Route Master, I recommend using two wide receivers with Wide Receiver Apprentice. I have that on Julio Jones, and I have it on Randy Moss. Uh, you guys see me audible to trade wide flex and put corner routes on people or put uh, the, cor the, the post route. Uh, both the, the corner route and the post route pretty much are the main hot routes that you're going to use with the Wide Receiver Apprentice or with the Hot Route Master. But let's go ahead and tell you guys how I run Blast and Trey Wide Flex effectively together. Now... I will always come out with Blast. Blast is the play I pretty much come out in all the time. The audibles I set for this are Blast is Y and Read Option is, is there. Then I go to uh, Trey Y Flex, Audibles. Uh, one of them is going to be, as I didn't, as I messed it up right there, one of them is going to be, um, we'll go random play. One of them is going to be Dagger. The other one is Read Option. That's pretty much it. But the one thing I always do, I come out in uh, Blast to the short side. Now, the reason I do that, as I'm going to call a new play here, the reason I do that is because when I audible to trade wide flex, you always want your trade wide flex on the wide side of the field. Now, if you look in the diagrams of the plays, most of them have strong side. When I say strong side, the more receivers on the right side. Uh, tight offset, there's three wide receivers on the right, counting the running back. Bunch, three wide receivers on the right. Slash stack wide flex, three wide receivers on the right. Uh, Taysom Hill slot is flipped. Trey open is flipped. But Trey Y Flex is super flipped in that there's oh actually I mean Trey Open isn't flipped. There's three three wide receivers on the right. But Trey Y Flex is flipped. The strength is on the left of the play call screen. So essentially if you come out in that not flipped, it'll be on the left. So uh if one piece of advice I would give you guys is learn whatever plays you run, it doesn't have to be my book, it doesn't have to be the next person's book, it, does, it could be your own. Get used to running them flipped, it'll take your Madden game to the next level. But quarterback blast, I come out on the short side. Just because when I audible, you'll see right here, when I audible to Trey Y Flex, it is on the wide side. So if you ever if you ever run wonder that why that's that way, it's simply because I want to audible to Trey Y Flex and I want that to be on the wide side. So I always come out blast on the short side. Now blast is something I'll tell you right now. If your quarterback is not full stamina, don't run it. Don't run into an enforcer. Know where your enforcer is at. Before I before every play, I'll I'll do before the game, I'll get used to somebody's personnel. I'll hold the right trigger up and hold the right stick up and look at their abilities on defense. You know, if I see enforcer, if I see a safety linebacker, say it's on a, on a strong safety on the right, I might just, just run blast and get out here to the left. Like, I, I, I don't want to be anywhere near anywhere near a safety that has enforcer. That's pretty much one of my one rules. Um, the last one is uh, sometimes I motion out this tight end. Now, the only reason I do this is because I don't want him in a double team. Because if you're running blast, the key is to get to the second level. If you get caught up in the first 10 yards, it's not going to be an effective play, and you're going to risk yourself to a lot of quarterback hits, and it's harder to avoid those hits. It's easy to go out of bounds or slide if you get to the second level with a lot of space. And 
the toughest, the easiest way to get to the second level is a hat on a hat. If you leave that tight end in line, he's going to double team Demarcus Lawrence, leaving I believe that's Van Der Esch, leaving Van Der Esch free to go get the quarterback. And we don't want to get hit by Van Der Esch. He's a beast. So you'll see now he'll go right up to Van Der Esch and tackle him. And look where I get a nice 20 yard gain because of that. Now let's see. I don't know if he would double team Demarcus Lawrence. But we get a double team there. See what I mean? Now, in Mutt, you're not getting away from that safety. In Mutt, you're not getting away from that linebacker. That's Patrick Willis or Shazier. That's what I don't want. I don't want those double teams. Although the tight end was not in the double team, this is our double team. The right tackle and the right guard were part of the double team. So that's what allowed Van Der Esch to go free. That's why I motion out that tight end every once in a while. But that's blast. Like I said, um, use it. Use it, you know, sparingly, but it's still super effective. I love it. You can run this offense without even running blast because I, I will tell you, Dagger has been one of the best plays in the game the last couple of years. I had a YouTube video on, I believe, last year, but I, it really is one of the best plays. Dagger, I want my best wide receivers outside and inside. Right now, every receiver is good, but that's where I want my abilities. On my abilities outside and inside, the slot guy, that's going to be your motion block guy. It's going to be your worst wide receiver. Whether you have, I, whoever it is, I know you don't have a bad wide receiver, but the guy you're not in love with, the guy you don't have abilities on, that's your guy. But Dagger is a play I'll show you. It's it's super, we'll go here with Dollar and we'll go uh, we'll go DB Fire. That's a popular defense, right? Um, the thing about Dagger is there's three wide receivers that are option. Why really isn't an option? That's why. We motion block them so much, and we want these trips to the Y side. Remember that you have A on a drag, which is uh, Evan Ingram for me. I don't know who uses a tight end. If there's not 99 speed, there's a way to get four wide receivers in this set. I'll show you that after after I show you the play. I'll show you how to get four wide receivers. It's pretty easy. A little bit for me, it was more important when tight ends weren't 97 speed. Now that Ingram is so fast that he can burn people, I'm cool with having Ingram, Evan Ingram there. I don't want to do all the subs and packages. I'm lazy. But if you guys want four wide receivers, I'll show you how to do that. But uh, like I said, this crossing route, unguardable. It's the best crossing route in the game. Now, I will tell you, as much as stamina, I talked about it with the quarterback, and we talk about it with running backs when they fumble, stamina matters to wide receivers. If this guy is full health, there is nothing stopping this route. If he's a little bit light blue, he can get guarded. He will be guarded. Keep that in your mind when you are running this offense. Make sure that guy is full stamina all the time. If you have to sub somebody out and sub and some somebody new in, even if your person you sub in doesn't have abilities, he's probably better off than the person with abilities running this route if he's full stamina. The route is that good. But, like I said, if he's tired, he'll be a little sluggish. He'll get j jammed a lot easier, and he'll get covered a lot easier. Wide receiver stamina definitely matters on running routes, and you'll notice it when you run dagger. So I'll tell you that before you even start this. But like I said, um, you have the crossing route, you have the in route. The deep in route in Madden has been a staple of the game all year, whether it be deep corner in bunch or any other formation with this deep in route, because it, because linebackers suck this year. Uh, if there's anybody behind them, they don't put their hands up, they, don't, they can't jump. So essentially you can kind of pepper the middle of the field with throws to big wide receivers, especially. You know, that's why I use Julio, Moss, and Calvin, big bodies. But uh, uh, th the last thing I'll tell you about this play is that one of the weaknesses of Trey Y Flex, as opposed to bunch, as opposed to tight slots, as opposed to uh, uh, wide trips, um, there's only one person you can block. Now, you can, you can motion and boil, and you can block boil like this, but that wastes your motion. You don't want to waste your motion, uh, but we're going to have to waste our motion anyway. The other way you waste your motion, waste, waste our motion. Um, the only way you block is if you motion in Y. That's why I tell you guys Y is going to be your weakest Y receiver. Now, the motion snap him, you're going to pretty much, once he passes Marquise Brown, you're going to snap in between Marquise Brown and the left tackle. Now, I'll be honest, this is the toughest part of the formation, is getting this motion snap timing down right. It's something I still struggle with, you know, but you want this guy to block right here. Willie Sneed, right when he gets bang, right there, he'll block that guy, and you can get out. That's what's crazy about the Madden 20 is that running backs and wide receivers, they will block the hell. This can be uh, Khalil Mack. If he's on a contain, whoever it is, he will stonewall. Uh, that time I did it too early. You see the difference? But we'll go ahead and hit this route right here. Marquise Brown, big play. Just get a timing down for that motion block, man. But like I said, you're going to look for B the whole time. This is why, and it pisses me off, because you guys are people that do this. Why was open. Why for me, if you guys watch Befriending the Boss, he is, I will never throw to this person. My eyes, when I run this play, are 1 million percent. They pretty much do not look past 
uh, the left hash on the field. They don't. I look, where is your user at? Where is you going to go? Because in my mind, I know B has to be user guarded. So I am going to throw B if you do not user it. When everybody else on the field could be a touchdown. I'm watching your user and I'm watching. That's it. I'm watching the user. What's he going? Because I know I can throw B if he doesn't cover it. If he does cover it, I want to come back to X. And most of the time, even if he does cover B, I know he's eventually going to come back to the middle of the field because it's so hard to keep your user on the sideline. That's why the sideline throws are so effective because people are so stubborn and never cover all the way to the sideline. So that's it, man. I'm going to step up here. I'm going to look for B, and right there, the you know, we just made all them guys go down in the box. A little juke right there. Baja, Marquise Brown. There you go. It's the it's one of the best routes in the game. So that's why I miss Y sometimes on a touchdown, because I'm not looking at that person. That I have no desire to throw him the ball. Now, I wish I was Dan Marino or Peyton Manning. I could see the whole field and recognize all 11 people on defense. But I'll be honest, I'm not that good. And I'm pretty sure you're not that good, and that's okay. So... Make sure you just look at the user. This is just a one. It's it's really a two-person read. If he covers B, you go to X, really. Now, a lot of times, sometimes there's yellow zones in there. Make it a little difficult. And that's when you all have the old trusty inside zone. If they're putting too many people in coverage. One of the reasons I, I do like this inside zone is just still good. You know, it really is still a good play to keep. Between that blast and last thing I'll show you guys is the read option. Now... When I start talking about the read option, one, nobody changes their, their option defense, and nobody changes that to start the game. Nobody does, especially if you're in trade by flex. If you're in pistol, maybe they'll change that. But nobody changes their read option defense. So by default, I will tell you, 90% of the time, we're going to run a little two-man on here, 90% of the time, they're going to be in attack the running back. So your quarterback will be free. Now, you have to use this to your advantage because the if they let the quarterback go free and they're not ready for it, they're expecting inside zone. They're never expecting read option until you run it. So the first read option is free. Think of that. You can cheat them one time with the read option. So you have to use it for a huge play. Don't use it for a five-yard play or a four-yard play. You, you want to use this read option for a 50-yard touchdown play. So that's why the only time I like running it is when I have numbers on the right side. Right now, I have numbers. Now... One person, I have to make one person miss. Whether that be with Lamar or Vic, I can make one person miss. Especially if they click on, I can make them miss. Right? But more often than not, uh, they're going to be on the linebacker or one of the safeties on the right side here. So for me, I want to use this read option. If there's more, if there's more people on the right side, uh, I wouldn't run read option first. Because even if they get a quarterback, you're not going to have the numbers to make a big play. So that's my rule to you guys. Um... Let's, let's do that. If there's four people to the right or the center, run read option. If there's five, don't. If it's balanced, keep running inside zone. But the read option will be free. And I'll see the computer. I'm not sure I've run this a lot against the computer. And it's something you should do if you want to run a read option. Get used to the handing the ball off, really. So the first read option is free, meaning they're going to chase the running back. And he does right there. Well, you know, Jalen Smith is just one of the best players in the world. But that's what I mean. So I got 20, 30 yards off of that because there's not anybody over here. Now, my tackle did run away from Jalen Smith. I would have liked him to block him or somebody block him. But the good news in that is that he got up to the sale. I didn't do nothing. More often than not, this is what I mean about four people over here. The one gets bit on by the read at pause, by the read option. And this guy should have got blocked. This dude gets blocked. And then you're off to the safety right here. So you have all this space with Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick. That's what I mean about a free. The first one's free. Now, after that, he's going to he's going to make an adjustment and not give you this all the time, but you can still run read option, especially against these 2-3-6, 1-4-6. All, all these defenses, that these heavy DB defenses right here, that's what I want to see. Block Jalen Smith and look at the space I have. You know, you just have that much more space. Use that first read option for a big play. That's the biggest piece of advice I can give you. Um, but like I said, this is pretty much how I'm running my offense. It's pretty much how I've played mutt probably for the last month. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys have watched me do that. So if you like this video, if you have any questions, please leave them below. If you like more tips, more schemes, anything like this, what playbook would you like to see? Also, leave that below and hit the like button. Boys, I appreciate it.